This is a panoramic of my graduating senior class. Is there anything that stands out? You know, besides that there's a hundred million students. Look very closely. Keep looking. If you couldn't point out the difference, let me show you. There is one white student. Two white students. And three white students. Three white students in a class of more than a thousand. The situation wasn't any different in the elementary and middle schools that I went to. They were all roughly made up of half African American students and half Latino students, with white students only making two or three percent of the population. And unfortunately, this modern day segregation didn't just happen in my Dallas neighborhood. According to a new analysis of data from the U.S. Department of Education, an overwhelming majority of Latino and Black students study in racially isolated classrooms. 80% of Latino students and 74% of Black students are in schools where the majority of students are not white. More specifically, 43% of Latinos and 38% of Black attend intensely segregated schools where white students comprise 10% or less of the student body. In the words of Gary Orfield, quote, if Martin Luther were to come back to see where we are now, I think he'd be shocked to see that the schools are actually more segregated than they were when he died, unquote. How can it be? Well, it's not that complicated. Beginning in 1991, the Supreme Court began lifting desegregation laws that required cities to desegregate their schools. This made it possible for unhappy upper-middle-class parents to remove their children from desegregated schools and put them into less racially and economically diverse schools. If schools didn't meet the parents' needs for whatever reason, these parents simply created their own neighborhoods or towns, and eventually their own schools. Most new neighborhoods that were established are made up of affluent, educated people who have the time and money to be involved in the education of their children. These same children are 50% more likely to complete college, which is the single most important predictor of success in the workforce. Wait, the, who are the affluent upper middle class folks I'm talking about? You guessed it. It was, for the most part, white parents. Instead of fixing education and community problems as a team, many white parents decided it was much easier to separate from the main cities and districts and simply create their own towns and education districts. I'm not judging their decision. After all, they're doing what's necessary for their kids to attend and finish college. But I am pointing out that they have created a gap that gets harder to fill in by the day. Their decision creates a pattern that I'm very familiar with. Black and Hispanic students are left behind in low-performing schools where it is likely that there are also discipline issues, and as a result, the most qualified teachers stray away while the upper-middle white students benefit and prosper from new, well-equipped, and safe schools. I was lucky enough to make it to college, but when I entered one of the most diverse universities in the United States, I was dumbfounded. There were so many cultures around me, I felt cheated. I loved walking among so many different ethnicities and races, but I felt that I didn't belong because my place was never among so many different people. My place, or so I thought, was only amongst my brown and black people. Don't get me wrong, I love where I grew up, but I wanted to belong to more than just what I was familiar with. So I began to question, why had I never been around so many kinds of people? What did I do wrong? What did my parents do wrong? My parents hadn't done anything wrong. I hadn't done anything wrong. It was the education system that had failed me by not providing me with the real experience of what the bigger world is like. 
It was the education system that failed me by creating different school districts that would only benefit the wealthier families instead of fixing the ones that were broken and served the majority of the students. It was the Supreme Court that failed me by enforcing desegregation laws for only three decades and deciding that was enough. Back to my college experience. Three years into my undergraduate education, I still struggle to connect with people who aren't from the same backgrounds as mine. My schooling did not prepare me for the cultural and ethnic change that I would encounter in college. It is not enough for schools to simply educationally prepare their students for college. Students must be able to interact and relate to other students in college classes. And this cannot happen if students attend middle and high schools that are largely segregated. If you really want to prepare students for college, and more importantly, the bigger world out there, we have to ensure we place them in classrooms that represent the real world.